Happy bonus video! Hey guys, I know I promised that I would share my So Frugal Make in my March Makes video, but I decided to give a little bit of a bonus video and show you how I decided to hack the free Raglan t-shirt into a really fun, flirty, cute, ruffle t-shirt dress. Let's find out how. So this is PDF Stitcher, and this is how I'm going to start the process of getting this pattern ready to project. I actually don't have a video on this program. It's quite simple, so if I can find something on YouTube that's decent, I will link it in the description box. But essentially, I'm taking the free pattern that was a print at home pattern and combining all the pages to make one large format PDF and then I can use that to project. So it's a fairly easy process. The only thing you really need to know is if there's any margins for when you print out an overlap to tape. And luckily this pattern does not have margins. It just gets butted right up edge to edge. So I'm able to just input, input all that information and then voila, it is now one PDF pattern. So I can take it from there and open it up in Inkscape. I do have a few videos on Inkscape or two, something like that. I can link those down below for anybody interested in learning a little bit more about the program. It's okay, <laughs> I'm not very tech savvy, but I do know the basis, basics enough to get the results I need. So here is the pattern in Inkscape. And after measuring the width of the bodice, front and back, I decided I wanted to add a little bit of width. Um, and I decided to add it at the center. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But what I did is just made a rectangle and then made it the width that I wanted to. I originally thought I would make it one inch wide, which would give me a total of two inches in addition on the front and two in inches in addition on the back. And then I did end up reducing it to inch and a half uh, on the front and an inch and a half on the back for a three inch addition in the circumference around the bust. And again, you'll see in the end how it ends up fitting me. But that's how I did it with just a basic rectangle added to the center there. And then the sleeve, I don't do anything with because I'm just gonna use the short sleeve and that'll be easy to see on the fabric when I project it. I did end up going in after and I actually thought I recorded this, but I can't find it. So I did use the Green Style Creations Green Tea V-neck to add a V-neck to this projector file. And I also used their V-neck band on this file as well. So I brought those two pieces in to adapt my pattern. And then I kind of just measured how low I wanted that V-neck to be and lined that up on there. And then I saved it and saved it as a PDF. So then I can open it, at a, open it in Adobe and get it to the right size to project. And then I'm ready to cut out this fabric. So here she is, you can see that v-neck there I just cut out. And then how I lengthen the bodice, right, because I'm making a dress, is I just measure and then move it on my computer screen or move the fabric to add length the way I need to or where, where I need it to be added. I've shown this in other videos as well, um, but if you're using paper, obviously you can just cut the pattern at the waistline or wherever you want to add and then tape extra paper in there to get it to the desired length. So I think I ended up adding seven inches to the length. And then I really do like the curved detail, but I did end up cutting it straight across because we are going to add a ruffle. And then I just used that piece to be my guide for the length of the other piece. So that was the front, I used the side seam there to make the right length for the back making sure i'm cutting at the right neckline and this fabric was pretty much the exact perfect cut for this project because i didn't have much left over it ends up being very close to a zero waste project which i love so what's left on the bottom there under the pattern piece is going to end up being used for the ruffle and then the part that's not folded over there closest to the camera is going to be the sleeves. And again, I'm just making the regular short sleeve. And within all that, I will have enough left over to do my neckband. 
So the ruffle and the neckband are going to wait till later. So what I ended up doing was sewing up the front and back and the sleeves together. And then I decided after what I was going to do for the ruffle that would end up getting gathered in and attached to the bodice. But I wanted to try it on and see what the length was going to be like and all that sort of thing. So here she be. You can see the issue with adding width to the center, right? Like I added three inches to the center front and center back. So that's why I'm getting that extra width at the shoulders there. Next time I would probably do it differently. Um, but other than that, it's looking pretty good. The length is pretty close to where I would want it to be. Um, I do end up kind of, I do end up cutting some off, but we'll chat about that in a minute. So basically I need to shorten the sleeves, add the ruffle and add the neck band. So I cut off three inches here and I marked my center points with some clips and then I have my ruffle piece. Now I did this at one and a half times the length of the bottom of the dress and then I ran a couple basting stitches to gather this up. I do have a video on gathering. I will leave that below as well. So gather that up and attach it to the dress just by pulling some threads, even them out, use lots of clips. Normally I like to base this on as well, but this time I chose not to, and I do kind of regret it. So just attaching that right sides together to the bottom of the dress there. Time to add the neck band. So I'm measuring here with a pliable measuring tape to see what the circumference of my neckline is, and then I'm going to take 80% of that and use that as the length of my neck band. So mine actually worked out to 40 inches, 80% of that is 32. And then I did end up adding a half inch for seam allowance, so quarter inch on each cut edge. And I'm using the width of the Green Style Creations neck band, which was one and three quarters of an inch wide. So I will use both of those measurements to now make my neck band. And I have a little bit extra in case something goes wrong. Now to make it be appropriate for a V-neck so that it fix, fits the neck fits the neckline nicely, I need to make a notch kind of like a um, like a tail or the end of a bow ribbon might be. So I'm finding the halfway mark of that end. So one and three quarters divided by two is seven eighths. So I'm marking that. I know you can't see it. I bad camera angle, <laughs> but I'm marking that at halfway point. And then I'm going to measure one inch in to the length of the neck band and I'm going to make a mark. And so at the center, that is how much the notch will be in. It'll make more sense when I show you here up close. And then from the corner, I'm going to go on a diagonal up to that notch and then back down to the other side. And I do have this doubled over, so I'm cutting both cut ends at the same time. So here's what it looks like once you have it cut. And then I'm just going to stitch that together at a quarter inch. And I do find it easier to stitch from the inside point out to the ends, just cause those little ends get caught up in the machine and all that. So I'm going to stitch from the inside out to one side and then from the center back to the other side. And here's what that looks like. Then I'm gonna go ahead and press that open and then press the whole neck band in half so that it's ready to attach to the dress. First though, I'm going to clip into here, snipping to, but not through that stitch line. Okay, pressing is all complete. You can see it's starting to look like a real neck band now. And it has that nice finished point there. Yeah, those tails overhang, but we'll deal with that afterwards. So I've marked the halfway and quarterway points, or I guess all four quarters. And I've done that as well on the dress neckline. And then it's just a matter of attaching this pretty much the same as a regular neckband. The only difference is when it comes to the V. So how we do that is we line up one side like so. And we make sure that that center of the V is not right at the end like that because then it'll be skewed off to the side. We need it to overhang a little bit to accommodate for the seam allowance, right? We need to be about a quarter of an inch away. So we're going to stitch about a, an inch away down to that seam and then keep your needle down in that V neckband stitch 
and pivot the neckband to then sew about an inch on the other side and you don't you don't have to back stitch here or anything it's more just a stay stitch for then when you go and use your serger and serge around the entire way i like to start at the neck neck point and finish at the neck point so that it comes on and off nice and clean and then it's complete. I did end up leaving the bottom hem and the sleeve hems raw. I did cut the sleeves up a little bit. I might even cut them higher or at more of an angle, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. Very, very cute, basic, and just adds a little something to a regular old t-shirt dress. It makes it look a little bit less like a nightgown, although it could definitely still pass as a nightgown, but I'm really excited to wear this in the, well, <laughs> late spring and summer. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed my version of So Frugal. Unfortunately, I won't be able to enter because I'm not on Instagram, but good luck to you with your entries. Hopefully you win some fun prizes, and more importantly, hopefully you enjoyed sewing something from your stash with a free pattern, and you now have a great garment to wear into the next season that we are entering, whether that be spring or fall, you know, depending on where you live in the world. And I always like to hear what everyone creates, so leave me a comment down below and let me know what you decided. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like if you like free patterns. And if you want to catch more of my videos, hit subscribe. Turn the bell notification on if you don't ever want to miss a new video. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.